Hello everyone, I'm Rick Martin, Director of Communications and Community Relations for Douglas County. Thank you so much for joining us. It's Thursday, October 22nd. And with me today, special guest, Dr. Janet Meemark, with the latest details on COVID-19 and how it pertains to Douglas County. Thank you so much for joining us again, Dr. Meemark. How are you today? I'm good, thanks for having me today. So we have a lot going on, so I wanna get right to it, Dr. Meemark. So what's going on? the latest in Douglas County. Where are we with the numbers? Are we seeing outbreaks in certain industries? What can you tell us? Yeah, so right now in Douglas County, we have just under 4,000 cases, um, 3,984 cases of COVID-19 um, and 72 deaths um, in Douglas County. Um, if you are looking at the DPH website, you can um, see that the 14-day case rate that we've been following is down to 136 um, over 100,000. And so it had gotten up to about 160 um, last week um, and then um, is coming back down a little bit. So remember, 136 is still considered in the high transmission rate. So we are definitely not out of the woods and we have sustained community transmission, meaning it, it is spreading from person to person. Um, but that rate um, being said, we are able to contain it. So here at Public Health, we can call everybody, we can make sure whoever needs to be tested can get tested, and we can get people isolated and quarantined as necessary. So remember, this is a very important aspect to this um, a virus. We do not have a cure for it. So I, you know, going to kind of remind everybody, the only thing we have is to be able to identify people quickly and keep them isolated at home and the people that they may have transmitted it to keeping them quarantined. And so that's a really important aspect of, of this um, uh, virus. The, um, trend, the um, positivity rate is about 7%, seven, um, percent, seven to eight percent. So that is something we'd like to see under 5%, but between seven and eight, um, it seems to be holding steady at, at that right now. Great. Dr. Meemark, where does Wellstar Douglas Hospital stand right now? So um, Wall Street Douglas Hospital continues to be quite busy. Um, it seems to fluctuate day by day. Um, as of this morning, um, the critical care units are very, very busy. They did not have um, any open beds that were recorded, reported to us today. Um, the medical surgical beds, they had a little bit more room and the ERs seem to be doing okay. Remember, all of these patients are not COVID-19 patients, but um, a lot of patients are coming that had um, not gotten care previously in the last seven months. And so so um, this is a, a chance for me to remind you that if you have medical conditions that need to be taken care of, please do not put off doing that. Um, what we're seeing is people that are coming in more serious condition later because they didn't take care of it previously. So the hospitals have been doing you know, pretty well with their infection prevention and everything. So um, you will be okay. So just make sure you get the care that you need. Awesome. Great information. Dr. Meemark, what do you expect over the next few months? Should people continue to get the flu shot? What can you tell us? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for asking. The flu shot is just vital this year. We are seeing lower cases of the flu, but that has to do with a lot of the stuff that we've been doing, the prevention stuff of wearing your mask, washing your hands, socially distancing, but getting the flu shot is extremely important. We have you know, one weapon that can help with some of these things that we're seeing right now. So it would be devastating for us to have a, a twin pandemics of, of flu and COVID-19. So extremely important. Um, remember, you know, because we are at 136 cases, we're still in a high transmission category. But what we're seeing around the nation is we have dozens of states that are experiencing a surge right now. Um, some of them are even higher than they were in that July, August surge and hospitals are very overwhelmed. So if you think about it, if we have a lot of our country that are, is experiencing this and we're going to move into cold weather and we're going to move into holidays and we'll be indoors more, it is kind of right for having something really bad potentially happen, right? So what can we do? The only thing we can do is what we have been doing. And I know everyone is really tired. I'm exhausted too. and I'm tired of COVID too, right? But please, we can't let up. I've, I've been, you know, when I go out, I see that there are less people wearing masks than they were, but people are gathering more and really not thinking about what, what is going on. And so making sure you wear that mask, 
you wash your hands, socially distance, get that flu shot, and try to avoid crowds of, of more than 10 people. Um, as we go into your holidays and you're making holiday plans, um, please just remember that. Um, when we look at, you know, um, if you're going to gather with your, your family members, just take a look at where they're coming from. Um, if they're coming from an area that's experiencing a surge right now, you really want to think twice if you have elderly parents or uh, medically fragile people in your family that you, you really don't want to, to introduce that at this time. You know, and that goes right into um, letting our viewers know in Douglas County that this coming Saturday, October 24th, we have free COVID-19 testing thanks to Cobb and Douglas Public Health, the core organization, and Douglas County Board of Commissioners. We have free testing from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Douglas County Courthouse. It's drive through You know, please register and you can find a link on our website. Dr. Meemark, a lot of families would want to know from Douglas County, how are Douglas County schools doing? How are they doing since the reopening? So, you know, we're, we've, been, we've been very pleased with things um, as they're going in Douglas County schools. Um, they, they've been keeping the cases to a minimum, and I really believe that it has to do with a lot of the work they, done, they did on the front end um, for this and the prevention effort. Um, Superintendent North and his um, staff did um, some really great jobs at keeping class sizes down and spreading people apart. And that has been critical to making sure that we kept this controlled. We have you know, a few cases that come in, but nothing like you're seeing in different dif districts around the state. So um, seriously, kudos to them, and, and they're doing a great job with that. Is there any advice that you want to give regarding the upcoming holidays? Well, you know, the CDC has some pretty good guidelines to just remind yourselves of. And so things to think about is that, you know, as it, it gets cooler, people want to go back inside, right? And so be careful with that because it's safer to be outside if you can. Um, remembering we talked about where your family is coming from or where you're coming from um, to go see family members. Um, if there are things that you can do to try to keep yourselves a little bit like semi-quarantined um, for two weeks before you see any, any family members and maybe get tested before you go see them. All of these things, um, it's not 100%, but they help, right? Um, just be think about those family members that, that may um, not do well if they con contract this um, virus, and think about them and what you can do ahead of time to, to try to mitigate that before it happens. And we have Halloween, so I just want to remind people of Halloween, just be careful. Traditional um, trick-or-treating is considered high risk. But um, please don't wear, if you go out, don't wear your mask um, underneath a, a costume mask because that can be dangerous. So um, just looking at different ways you can you can be safer doing that. Yeah, my family and I were really trying to, you know, in light of the whole situation, we've delayed our plans to visit my parents in Maryland for the holidays. You know, we just made that decision just yesterday. Um, the courthouse and the sheriff's office, you know, we've, you know, postponed. Uh, the activities of Halloween uh, because of the high risk. And uh, so, you know, a lot is happening. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it's important that we want to be vigilant, vigilant yeah. to be safe, washing our hands, maintaining social distancing, getting the flu shot. Uh, so, you know, and wearing our mask. That's is right. there anything else? <laughs> Talk to me, Mark. Is there anything else you'd like to tell the residents of Douglas County? No, Rick, you're getting really good at this. You can be able to do this on your own soon. Um, the last thing I'll just add to that is try to avoid um, um, gatherings of more than 10 people. We are seeing um, some outbreaks, and, and whenever that happens, we're seeing some of it. So weddings and parties and um, and sporting events, that's where we're seeing a lot of our outbreaks, as well as in, in uh, businesses as well. So um, just be mindful of that and, and make sure you keep doing what you, what you got to do with your masks and stuff. That's great advice. So limit your gathering. No more than 10 people is what you recommend. Yep. And outside if you can, please. <laughs> okay. Dr. Meemark, I can't thank you enough for joining us and being willing to keep us informed. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody.